Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP EliteBook 745 model. And in today's video I'm going to take you step by step how to open it up and how to repaste or service your laptop. And you should be doing this service every few years. And if you find your laptop warming up or overheating, this service is for you. And you can also boost up the performance by doing your own service. All right. To do the service, we're going to start by uh, looking at the tools that we're going to be needing. The most important tool is the screwdriver set. I would really recommend you guys to grab the iFixit tool set. I'll leave the link in my description. These tool sets, they have all the bits that you will need and pretty much on electronics from the Torx screw, screw set, which they have a secure lock in them with a pin in the middle towards the for the iPhone for everything else we're gonna be using a Phillips number one and one of the torques also you will need an alcohol which is a 100% alcohol or 95% isopropolic alcohol or isopropolic you will need a workshop towel so grab one or two of the sheets you will need obviously the most important one is an thermal paste I use the Arctic MX4 thermal paste which is one of the good ones if you want one of the best one, you can go with the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which is one of the top brands. It's better than MX4, but depending the client. But if you guys want to do your own, go with this brand. I'll leave the link in the description also. All right. And also you will need a toothbrush, a used or new one. These are really good for cleaning motherboards or fans. You will need a guitar pick or opening tool. I use the guitar pick as an opening tool, which is really tough and soft edges. That's suitable to do for the opening tool. Unless you want to get the pro version of the iFixit tool set, which they include your opening tool and some tweezers. All right, with all this, we should get it started. First thing first, you want to power it up and you want to flip upside down the laptop uh, to see the bottom cover. To remove the service cover, all you have to do is to pull these triggers towards the left. Make sure you hear that click. And then slide the cover towards the front end of the laptop. And then lift it up. This is the bottom service cover. And we can see it's really dirty. So go ahead and clean up this part. First, we're going to start removing the battery by removing this trigger towards the right. And then this trigger right here is broken. So you want to use a tweezer. If yours is not broken, just pull it down. I'm gonna pull this one down and then grab this plastic right here and lift it up towards the ceiling and the battery should come out pretty easy. Next, we're gonna remove the hard drive by removing four screws. Just loosen, loosen up the screws because they have a seal lock on them. It will not come out, just loosen them up. And then you wanna grab the tail and just pull it back and the hard drive should come up. I made another video how to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD drive if you want to watch that one. All right, now we're going to remove a whole bunch of screws down here in order to be able to remove the heatsink. I don't know why they put the heatsink under this metal cover, which is the another base. If they had to put it on top, we should have just removed it pretty easy. But now we have to remove all the screws. All right, first we're gonna start with the M M2 times two screws, which is under the battery. Go ahead and remove these flat screws. You do not need to remove this one, just remove the one that has a label. Those are the only Phillips screws that we're gonna be removing. And now we're gonna switch back to torque number, I believe, Yes, we're going to use torque number two, number nine. Use that torque number nine and start removing all the screws starting from one corner. All the torques are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching them. Uh, 
We also have to remove the keyboard, which is the two Phillips square Phillips bed uh, screws right there. So remove this one, loosen them up, and the one has a keyboard screw right there. Remove that one now. Also, we're gonna loosen up there with the tweezers. We're gonna lose, uh, remove the antenna cables right here. So just by pulling them the up. And that's it, just leave them there. All right, now that we loosen up the keyboard and we remove all the torque screws. These screws right here, we don't, we're not gonna touch it. Let me see if there's uh, more screws right under this one. Yeah, you don't need to remove this one. These are for the heat sink. So I'll leave it the way it is. Now we're gonna open up the laptop and we're gonna remove the keyboard. To remove the keyboard, simply put your guitar pick right there and just twist it around, go all around it. And now you can lift it up and pull it out. And you're gonna see a flex cable right here. You wanna lift up this flex cable, you wanna put your finger right in there and lift it up. Let me see if I can focus on that. So what do you wanna do? You wanna put it right underneath and lift up this cover 90 degrees and slide out the flex cable. Same thing for the LCD cable, I mean, for a LED cable. For the backlight, lift it up and then slide out the backlight. For the uh, little trackpad that they have, same thing. Put your finger now on the other side, lift it up 90 degrees, this thing right here, and then slide out the cable. And that's the keyboard. Well, once you got the keyboard removed, now we need to remove the trackpad, lift up this 90 degrees, slide out, slide out the cable. There's no more screws in this end. What we wanna do right now, we're gonna remove the top and bottom cover. You wanna place this one right there and then lift it up, go all around, go to this side, remove this SD card reader and there's a tiny Phillips screw right here. So remove this Phillips square. Phillips screw right there is a long one. And then you simply just want to lift it up, bring it up, and it should be all set. Now there's a CPU and the GPU and the fan right here. To remove the... Actually, we did not have to remove the keyboard, but we did remove it. So if you want to clean the other side, go ahead and clean it up because the fan, it actually brings some dust on the other side. You could have actually cleaned it up. The keyboard part was not necessary. So to remove the fan, remove two screws or loose them up. Now we're gonna remove the screws for the GPU and the four screws for the CPU clamp. So go ahead and loosen these ones up. Now you wanna grab it from both sides and just twist it and bring it up. And you can see all the dust that everything is in here. And to disconnect the fan, just pull this cable jack backward and it should come out pretty easy. Now we can take it out and clean it up. If this one doesn't stick anymore, you see this one is kind of broken. Don't worry about it. You can use a different tape. So we're going to repaste, we're going to clean up this old thermal paste. And we're going to be doing it using a work towel. So soak it in there. Bring it over on the CPU and just rub it right on top. You do not need to clean around the CPU, the extra thermal paste, but if you want to be really picky, you could clean it, but it's not necessary. As long as you clean the dye, then you're fine with it. So, and the GPU. Be gentle with the capacitors on the GPU. That's why I use the workshop towel. Once you put alcohol and you try rub on them, the force from the capacitors, it just rips the towel. So you will not damage the capacitors. Now we're gonna clean the heat sink. Soak it in there. First, grab the excess of the thermal paste and then 
I'm gonna show you guys a little trick to make it even a little better. Uh, but let's first clean up the heat sink, use a toothbrush and a compressed air to blow through here. I'm gonna take it outside, I'm gonna blow a compressed air through here and I'll be back. All right, now that we clean up the fan and the heat sink, there's a little trick for the heat sink because of the decoloration on the heat on the copper in here, it being a tiny layer that prevents it from the heat going through nicely. You can grab any paste or liquid of the silver or copper cleaner, doesn't matter, silver or copper. And then you wanna grab yourself a cotton tip and then you wanna, you can use a paste or liquid and then we can go ahead and clean up the old the layer of the copper so we can expose the actual copper so the contact will be perfect with the dye so you're going to get even better results so you see the decoloration on top that it had now we're actually exposing the you have a little about one minute before you do it otherwise exposing to the air is going to decolorate again so be quick with it so right away what do you want to do? You want to put the fan in there, plug it in, grab the thermal paste, put a tiny drop right in the middle, and a drop right on the CPU. Now we're going to grab quickly the heat sink. We're going to bring it over, and we're going to align it. Also, if you're worried about this uh, tape underneath here, you can use another tape. I'll leave the link in the description. You can use this one from Amazon Basic. It's a gay first tape. So it's a kind of really heat resistance tape. You can use these ones, but it's a brand new one. Let me open it up. We're gonna cut a little bit of this. So the air can travel directly through the heat sink without coming out from this end. So place it right there. And you can grab the fan, put the fan over so it actually sticks to it on the bottom and that's it. Then you can place it on top. It's the same type of tape that is being used in here, right here. So, now we're gonna place it right in there, bring it down over. Once we screw it down, we're not gonna lift it up again, otherwise you have to repaste it. Always cross screw them, so I'll do one, two, actually they have a label, one, two, three, four, or doesn't matter what order you start, as long as you cross screw them. Make sure you tighten up the screws for the fan. And that should be all. You can actually go ahead and plug in the, I thought this plastic was with the top cover. You can go ahead and pl plug in the Wi-Fi cables. It was not necessary to unhook them. You just pop it back in and that's it. So let's go ahead and clean up the bottom cover. So clean it up with a toothbrush, with a towel, and bring it over, align it, and press down the corners. Put down the Phillips screw right on the SD card reader. And next, let's go ahead and put the flat screws right by the, under the battery. So we have some support once we flip it upside down. Put the keyboard back in. Again, the keyboard was not necessary to be removed, but if you want to do a good job cleaning it up, go ahead and remove the keyboard. That way you learn how to replace even your keyboard or you clean it up. I believe this wasn't necessary again. I don't know why I removed that one, but yeah. Switch back to the bed, the torque, and start putting the torque screws on the bottom cover. Again, I'll appreciate it. If you guys find my content helpful, please click the like button and Think about subscribing it will be a really great support to the channel and again i always take requests from my viewers and uh, from the people that subscribe to my channel
And as always, I'm missing a screw where am I supposed to put it? Let's see, right in the corner. Place the hard drive in, just slide it down and put the screws for the hard drive, just tighten them up. All right, now we're gonna flip it over, open it up and let's go ahead and plug in these flex cables. Just grab them and put them under the jack and then lock it right under, put the lock right over. Same thing with here, make sure lock is open, slide them right underneath and lock it in place. Uh, we're gonna grab the keyboard, let's go ahead and clean it up. You can take it outside and tap it and shake it. Bring it in this position. First, go ahead and plug in this cable for the trackpad in the middle. Slide it and lock it down. Grab the flex cable for the LCD for the keyboard, the big one. And just slide it right under this. I'm trying to do it on the camera so you guys can see it. As a little adhesive, you can rip the adhesive apart. There we go, it goes all the way in and then lock it down. Grab the backlight. Bring it over. You guys can see it this way. Pretty much you have to slide it right underneath. Now we're gonna make sure they are not disturbing on the way. And go ahead and slide it down and bring it and make sure the corners click in. It's just the corners, hit those clicks. And that's it. Now we're gonna close it down, flip it back up, head down and tighten up the two screws for the keyboard. One right here, and one right over here. And the last thing would be to grab the bottom battery, slide down the front end and bring it over, push it in and lock it in place. And obviously the bottom cover, you wanna take it outside again, you wanna clean it up. Once it's cleaned up, you wanna bring it in for it with an offset position. Slide it there and bring it towards the back end and lock it in place. And also place in the caddy for the SD card reader. And that's how you do your own service and maintenance for your HP Elite Book 745. I hope you guys liked this video and if you did, you know what to do. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.